Hello guys, what is your typical way to run make migration to create a new database table? Probably something like this, make migration, create, table name, table. And this is exactly how it is written in the official docs. So generating migrations is create flights table. And it says that the migration will attempt to guess the name of the table and will generate the schema create with table inside. So tags, if we run this one, and if we open the new migration, the table name is here. But what if I told you there are more convenient or even shorter ways to do the same thing in Laravel? Documentation doesn't say about that, or at least I haven't found it, but there are a few tricks which we can find in the Laravel core itself. So let's take a look what are the other syntax options. We can find them all in the core in the migrate make command in the vendor folder, which we cannot edit, but we can take a look what are the parameters. First, you can totally skip the make migration name and just provide those options as parameters. So instead of create tags table, you can name the migration whatever. It doesn't really matter, but have create equals projects, for example, table. And what would it generate? It generates the migration with timestamp and whatever. And if we open that whatever, schema create with projects is still generated. Not sure if it's the best way, of course, but I just wanted to show you that it is possible to provide those parameters as just flags on your artisan command. Next, if we scroll down to the actual method of generating the migration, which is handle method, this line is important. STR snake would transform your name into the snake case. What does it actually mean? It means that you can provide the string of migration name not necessarily with underscores. You can provide them with spaces, which is much easier for the finger to type than underscore. So you can have make migration and then in the quotes, create types table, for example, like this and it would still generate create types table with underscore because of that str snake. Next, if we scroll down through the same command, we try to get the options from the table, like I've showed you a minute ago, then if it's a table create, then we assign the table, and then this is important. There is a table guesser class, which is exactly what is doing the guessing of the table. And if we take a look at that table guesser, there are two patterns. And this is where we can find out that table is actually optional and we can use the same syntax without the underscore table. So we can do something like make migration create cars without the table and it would still generate if we open the migration schema create cars. And if we combine that with str snake, we can do create tasks, for example, and that's it. It would create a migration inside of that schema create for the tasks table. Similarly, we can generate a migration for change of the existing table. And this is another pattern we can learn from. So typically how I used to do it is add type to tasks table, something like this. And it would generate a migration with not schema create, but with schema table instead for any change for that database table of tasks. So. If we take a look at that table guesser and at this, we can skip the table the same as for create. And also there are three options to generate that pattern. So add type to tasks table or in tasks table, or for example, remove type from tasks table or something like this. So that would be also a valid syntax to generate schema table with tasks inside. So these are the various options how to generate the migration with various syntax ways according to the table guesser class. Quite often it's beneficial to look inside of the framework how exactly things work and you may find out very interesting parameters or options that you haven't seen earlier or that are not mentioned in the official documentation. If you want more tips like this one on this channel, of course, subscribe to the channel because I keep shooting daily videos about all the gems that I find inside the framework or in external packages. That's it for this time and see you guys in other videos.